Hallelujah. Please take your seats. Hallelujah. Amen. What year is 2020? I can't hear you. What year is 2020? It's a year of pressing. How many people are believing God for amazing things in this, in this year? A new year, a new decade. Come on now. It's double, double. Can you see? Two, 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 two. 2020, double, double. Say double, double. I will receive double, double blessings in the name of Jesus. So we all know that God has a good plan for all of our lives, yes? Jeremiah 29, 11. He has a good plan for our lives to prosper us, to give us a hope and a future. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And Psalms 35, 27 says, he takes delight in the prosperity of his servants. So just wave now and say, Lord, thank you that you delight in my prosperity. So therefore, 3 John 2 will be made manifest in my life. In the name of Jesus, I will prosper in all things, every area of my life. Nothing missing, nothing broken in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So 2020, God's got great things in store for us. Amen. Amen. So we're all believing God for amazing things, yes? Amen. Goals, desires, things that we know that God's given us. Amen. Amen. How many people aren't believing God for anything? No hands. Hallelujah. You guys are listening. Amen. So we're all believing God for amazing things, and God's going to do amazing things for us. You guys, I just want to say something. I really believe that God wants to encourage us all. Remember the story of um, Caleb, the children of Israel. God said he had given them the land, right? And 12 spies went out to spy out the land, right? And 10 came back with a negative report, yes? And two of them came back with a good report. Caleb and Joshua came back with a good report, yes? Did they all say the same things? Yes. Are you sure? Yes. They all saw, the Bible says there were giants in the land. Yes. There were giants in the land, right? Yes. But then the land was also filled with um, honey, milk and honey, good grapes, big grapes. They all saw the same things. But it's amazing, Joshua and Caleb came back with a good report, the others with a bad report. You know, sometimes, and, and so basically what happened in that story was that the children of Israel, you know, they polluted the whole Israelite camp, the negative ones. Okay, so Caleb basically had to wait 45 years, right, to take possession of what God had given him because of the naysayers. I want you to turn to your neighbor and say, I hope you're not a naysayer. <laughs> I don't want any negative people around me. <laughs> say to your neighbor, do not pollute me. If you're negative. Okay? And so that's what happened. But listen, after 45 years, Caleb went and said, give me my mountain to Joshua. He said, give me my mountain. The mountain that, you know, was meant to be mine 45 years ago. I am still strong enough. I can take this land. So when he went, he got the mountain. When he went back, do you think all the giants they saw there, number of years ago had died tell me did they die no. no the giants were still there well god gave caleb the mountain and so what do you think caleb had to do to possess the land he had to kill the giants he had to kill the giants so say today in the name of jesus in 2020 every giant standing in my way i will kill in jesus name so i can possess my land but you know sometimes what happens to us as believers you know we know that god's given us a mountain we get up the mountain we want to claim the mountain and then we see the giants and then we start singing this song there's a fire on the mountain there's a fire on the mountain is that what we're meant to do no we're meant to sing, I'm not moved by what I see. Hallelujah. I'm not moved by what I see. 
Amen. So we're not running away from any giants this year in the name of Jesus. Because if God has given us the land, if he has given us the land, he has given us the land. So put both your hands up right now. It's double, double. God has given me my land. And I will take full possession. I am not afraid. Because I know that God is with me. Amen. And you know, sometimes what happens is, sometimes when we get to that mountain and we see a bit of um, uh, um, problems, we see the storms, we see, we, we, we get frightened and we think, maybe, maybe, maybe we didn't really hear from God. Maybe God isn't really giving us this land. Maybe, maybe, no. Once you know that God's given it to you, he has given it to you. And what we need to do is, we need to go there and possess it. Because sometimes when we start out, it's easy. It's getting to the middle. It's always easy to start something. It's actually getting to the middle to get to the finish line. But you know, once God has said it, it is settled. Amen. Say, God's promises for my life, they are yes and amen. Amen. So I'm going to read um, a few scriptures right now. We're going to go to Matthew chapter 14, 22 to 24, about where Jesus specifically gave his um, disciples an instruction to go over to the other side and we see what happened to them because we have to know that even when we're on our way doing what we're meant to be doing and the enemy can come in storms can come in yes so the fact that storms are there is not an indication that God is not with us amen it is not an indication that God is not with us sometimes the storm it's a strong indication that God is with us. And the enemy wants to stop us from getting to the other side. Amen. But in the year of 2020, year of pressing in, we're going to press in. Say, I am going to press in. Okay, so we're going to read. So it says, so immediately Jesus made his disciples get into the boat. Who made his disciples get into the boat? Were well, they disobedient and just decided we're just going to get into this boat anyway? No. Jesus made his disciples get into the boat and go before him to the other side while he sent the multitudes away. And when he had sent the multitudes away, he went up on the mountain by himself to pray. Now when evening came, he was alone there, but the boat was now in the middle of the sea, tossed by the waves, for the wind was contrary. The waves didn't come when they were starting out. The waves came when they were in the middle. Hallelujah. We started 2020, some of us, we started 2020 with no storms. I'm not prophesying doom gloom, but I'm just saying sometimes when we get into the middle, some storms will come. But it is not an indication that God is not with us. So the clear thing is, what do we do when we're in the middle and the storms come? Hallelujah. We have to make sure we keep our eyes on where we're going, where God is taking us. Jesus said, go over to the other side. Put up your hand and say, Jesus has told me to go to the other side. Whatever it is you're believing God for, you're going to get there in the name of Jesus. You are going to cross over in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. No matter what storms come your way, you're crossing over. Say, I am crossing over. Amen. So we saw that storms came. Yes. I'm just going to jump through and go to... Um, um, verse 34 and 36, that same chapter. You know, so the storms came, the enemy wanted to shake them a bit. I want to ask you a question. You know, he's the Alpha and the Omega, the God who knows the end from the beginning. Do you think Jesus did not know that they were going to encounter some storms? Do you think he sent them over to the other side by themselves on the boat? Do you think, okay, remember when God was bringing out the children of Israel, right, from captivity, um, Exodus 13, 17 to 18, God says, it came to pass that when Pharaoh had let the people go, that God did not lead them by the way of the Philistines, although it was near, it was a shorter route. But God said, lest perhaps the people change their minds, they see war and return to Egypt. So God led the people around by the way of the wilderness. So God knew that these people still had slave mentality. They did not have warrior mentality. So if they go via the shorter route, they would see war, they would get frightened, and they would run back to Egypt. Say, there is no going back to Egypt. I am getting to my promised land in the name of Jesus. 
So God knew that these guys, nah, they can't handle it. So let me tell you something. Whatever storms come our way in 2020, God knows we can handle it. Whatever storms we're in right now, God knows we can handle it. Say, I can handle it because God is with me. I will therefore be not afraid. Amen. So God knew. But then I want us to go back to what do we do whilst we're in the middle? We're on our way. Crossover. That's crossover. This is where we're going. This is it. So what are we going to see? What, are we, what is the enemy trying to uh, get us to miss out on? Matthew 14.34. This was what the, his disciples were going to miss out on. He says, when they had crossed over, they came to the land of Gennesaret. And when the, men, when the men of that place recognized him, Jesus, they sent out into all that surrounding region, brought to him all who were sick, and begged him that they might only touch the hem of his garment. And as many as touched it were made perfectly well. As many as touched it. Listen, the enemy was going to rob the disciples from witnessing miracles. All the people had to do was touch the hem of his garment. They witnessed that. You know, there's nothing like personal experience. Like, I know God for myself. I know what God has done for my life. Thank God for what God has done for you. That is your testimony. I have my own testimony. And put up your hand and say, God has given me my own mega testimonies. In 2020, my own mega testimonies. I am going to declare the testimonies that God has done in my life in Jesus' name. Amen. That's what God wants to do. And that's what the enemy wants to rob us of. And that's why, whilst we're in the middle, we're believing God for our families. We're believing God for our marriage. We're believing God for our business. We're believing God for our ministry. We're believing God. We're believing God. You know, the only time, really and truly, when storms come our way is when we're going higher. That's it. You're going somewhere. That's when the enemy, look, you, wherever are you going? He wants to stop us and keep us stagnant and keep us small. It's, it's when we, we're believing God for big things. When you're believing God for good things. Anything we're believing God for, once it's the enemy doesn't want us to get there. And so he will bring the storms. What do we do in the storms? And I just want to share five things with us. And it's just to say that we need to fine tune our focus. Amen. In 2020, just fine tune. 2020 year of pressing. We're pressing in. We're not going to look back. We're not going to be distracted. We're not going to be dismayed. We're not going to be afraid. It doesn't matter what the enemy brings our way. We're crossing over to the other side. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So five things. I just need five people to come help me here, please. Okay, I shall call names. <laughs> The first one, thank you, Auntie Mary. The first one is S. C. No, so please, I'll call you one by one. Yeah, it's fine. So four more people, please be ready. So the first one is C. What do we see? What, what are we going to see? What are we going to choose to see in 2020? Because a lot will happen. And the enemy is going to try and get us fixing our eyes on so many things. What are we going to choose to see? What? Are we going to see the promises of God with our eyes? Are we? Are we going to choose to see the promises of God? Or are we going to see the storms that the enemy brings our way? What are we going to see? Caleb and Joshua and the other ten spies, they went to the same place. The other ten people were focused on the giants. Caleb and jo Josh chose to fix their eyes on the grapes, the good grapes, the honey, the, 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 the land flowing with milk and honey. That's what they chose to fix their eyes on. Not, not the giants. The giants will be there. But with God on our side, we will slay the giants. Amen. Amen. So in 2020, put up your hand and say, I will see, I will see what God has for me. I will refuse, I will refuse to focus 
on what the enemy is trying to do in Jesus' name. So we see, we remember Abraham as well. When God called him out, God told him to, to see, to see the stars, to see, to, see, to see the sand. You know, see, what are we saying? We choose what we see. In the midst of everything, we choose to see what God is doing. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. So that's the first S, uh, the first S, S for C. And the next one that I really believe that we need to make sure we fix our eyes on, fix our focus on is, is the, what we think on. Hallelujah. Jen, you were coming. Please come. What we, what we think on. Think. What, we, what do we focus our thoughts on? 2 Corinthians 10.5 says we should take every thought captive. So every thought that the enemy brings our way that does not line up with the word of God. What are we going to do with it? We're going to take it captive. We're going to have a good diet for our mind, for the way we think. Okay? When, 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 we, went off to, um, when we went off to Nigeria for three weeks, I, I seriously overindulged. I ate to my heart's content. I ate all the wrong things, the oily things, the sweet, delicious, sugar-filled, yes, I'm going to tell you a secret now. <laughs> sugar-filled bread. I mean, I indulged. I put on so much weight, it was unbelievable. I'll show you the photo now that I've lost the weight, PJ. And then, <laughs> the day before I left, I'd, I'd, you know, I'd had my food, three weeks of it. I, I took a photo with my dad and my husband, and I looked, even I could not recognize myself. And I said to myself, I'm going back to London in two days. PJ is going to just, oh my gosh, PJ will descend on me. I was like, oh, I can't go back to London like this. So between Monday when I got back and Wednesday, you have no idea. <laughs> you have no idea how much weight I lost, how many kilos I lost. I mean as an, I had to, but listen, I know why I put on the weight. It was what I was junking on. Same thing with our mind, what we think on. We've got to have a good diet for our, our mind. It's what we feed our mind with, our thoughts. The battle is always here first. We turn out, if you look nice and slender and slim, and it's, it's what you're eating and what you're doing. If you look, it's what you're eating and, you know, so we... Uh, I, I could not, I, I dare not blame the enemy for my weight. I couldn't. I knew I was personally responsible. I had to be personal. And that's the thing with our thoughts. We have to take personal responsibility for what goes in and out of here. Put up your hand and say, in the name of Jesus, in 2020, I take responsibility for my thoughts. What I think on, what I meditate on. Philippians 4, it is a good one. It talks about the things that we need to think and meditate on. So just look at those eight different things. If what you're thinking on, meditating on, doesn't line up with this, flush it out. Just flush it. Like, flush it. I got in the wrong cup. I'm getting straight out. I have a, you know, sometimes you wake up in the morning and kind of like, oh, hey, I'm in June and nothing has happened yet. Mm -hmm. 2020 is over. 2020 ain't over until the fat lady, fat lady sings. And listen, even when the fat lady decides to sing, you pull her down. Don't let her sing. It is not over. It ain't over. The fat lady cannot sing. I haven't crossed over yet. I am crossing over in 2020. Amen. Amen. So we're not going to allow it. Say, I am not going to allow it. I take full responsibility. I'll give you an example in the Bible about our thoughts. This woman... The woman with the issue of blood. For 12 years, the Bible says that she had had this issue. And then I, one day, I believe, she heard someone talk about Jesus. And she knew that Jesus had the solution to her problem. She knew. She knew it was Jesus. And all she was saying in her mind, she was thinking in her mind is, all I need to do is touch the hem of his garment. And you know, back then, she, 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 I mean, it was against the law for her to go out. So you can imagine the number of thoughts that would have bombarded her mind. Right. That, oh my gosh, if I'm caught, oh my gosh, if they catch me out, if they, uh, 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 oh, I, I shouldn't, I couldn't. Uh, uh. No, she refused. She refused all of those things. She just said, I don't care. I'm going to risk it. I'm going to go all the way out. And she had to press through the crowd. 
She wasn't thinking, oh gosh, eh, if I touch Jen, then I'm going to pollute her. If I, no. She had one thing in her mind. I need to get to Jesus and I need to touch the hem of her garment. So she refused all the other thoughts that would come in to prevent her from getting to where she was going to get to. Amen. Amen. So in 2020, I take responsibility for my thoughts. Amen. The next one is what we hear. Someone please come. Hobby, please come. Hallelujah. I'm going to put a man in the middle of this one. Hate for hobby. Hate for honey. Hate for handsome. Hate for... Yeah. <laughs> exactly like, leave me alone, don't call me. In 2020. <laughs> Hallelujah. So, what we hear is really important. You know, the Bible says in Romans 10, 17, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Amen. So what we need to do is we need to hear the word of God. We need to hear the right things. The right things have to come into our minds. And then also in hearing, we also, we also have to have selective hearing. Yes. Selective hearing. There's some things that you have to choose to ignore. Act like you didn't hear it. Yes. So many times when I'm kind of talking to my darling husband here, and he's hearing me. And when he doesn't want to, he goes, hmm, hmm. And I go, you heard me the first time. <laughs> Selective hearing. Selective hearing. Yes. But listen, in 2020, we have to hear the good stuff, and then we have to have selective hearing with the wrong stuff. Listen, there was this woman, the, the Syrophoenician woman. She came to Jesus. She wanted healing for her child. The disciples now came. When she came to Jesus, Jesus completely ignored her in the first place. She didn't hear that. You know we can hear that? We can hear that and be offended. I came to Jesus. Everyone who comes to Jesus gets healed. I've come to Jesus and he, he has just completely ignored me. How? Why? And they said Jesus is good. Attitude, go. Attitude, go. Go and you lose your blessing. Eh? Go and lose your blessing. So we choose what we hear. We do not hear that and get offended. I don't care. Jesus has the answer to my problem. Ignore me all the more. I shall stay here. And then not just that. The disciples came. I said, Master, send her away. She's disturbing us. The woman wasn't talking to the disciples. She was talking to Jesus. She could have heard that. She could have heard that too. And gotten offended at the disciples. And gone away. She had selective hearing. She chose what she heard. She did not hear uh, Jesus ignoring her. She did not hear the, the disciples saying, send her away. She did not. Right time when Jesus said something, she heard what she needed to hear. Let me show you this. Hallelujah. Amen. So say in 2020, I will hear the word of the Lord. And in 2020, I will have selective hearing. I will only hear that which benefits me, that which lines up with the, with the report of the Lord. Amen. Amen. So I'll read Matthew 15, 23 quickly. It says, Jesus did not answer another word. So his disciples came to him and urged him, send her away for she's crying out to us. She didn't respond. And then verse 24, he answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of Israel. And that's when the woman came and knelt before him and said, Lord, help me. And then he replied, it is not right to take the children's bread and toss it to the dogs. She heard. She heard that. And she still did not hear offense. She did not hear. Something that will cost, like me, look at me, me a dog, you call me a dog, and get up and go. No, I have what you, I have all, all, all that I need is in you, Lord Jesus. Everything I need is in you. I have no plan B. Put up both hands today and say, I have no plan B. I have no plan B. All that I have, all that I need is in Jesus. Amen. Amen. And, and then she, she responded to that. Even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall off from the master's table. 
And that was the response that Jesus wanted to hear. Did she get a miracle or not? She got a miracle. Hallelujah. So in 2020, we're going to hear the right things. We're going to be selective about what we choose not to hear. Moms in this house as well. Your kids, there are times when you say things to them and it's like they haven't heard you. Amen. And you know they've heard you. So we, we need to practice selective hearing. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. The next one is act. Please. A for act. Okay, so God has given us a word. We're standing on promises of God. We're believing God for so many things in 2020. So many breakthroughs. We're pressing in. We're pressing in. We're pressing. We have to act. We have to act on the word of God that we're standing on. We, ha- we, we must. The Bible says faith without works is dead. What are you believing God for? Take steps. You're believing God that by the end of 2020, I'd have a business. I would have started a business. Uh, my business would be doing so much. What are you doing about it? Or you're believing God that your business would expand. What are you doing about the expansion? Or your ministry, what are you doing? Or your marriage, what are you doing? Or your children, what are you doing? You know, we can talk. Talk is absolutely cheap. Amen? We need to act on what we believe in God for. And there's a classic example in the Bible, blind Bartimaeus. He had heard about Jesus. He had heard about Jesus. And so he knew that he was blind. He could not see Jesus. But you know, that's the thing. Everyone has issues. We all have issues. We're all a work in progress. So there will be one thing or the other that can hinder us or whatever. But the thing is, God is such a faithful God. We will always have what we need for our breakthrough. We will always have what we need for everything. We will have it. Amen? So he knew he couldn't see Jesus. So if Jesus is passing by, he will not be able to see Jesus. He positioned himself where Jesus was going. And he knew that he had a loud voice. He could make a joyful noise. And he was shouting, Jesus, son of David, have mercy. And that's the thing. Even when you're going for your breakthrough, the naysayers will come and they will shut you down. And you would want, don't, 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 don't listen. I, you, you got your sight and you're telling me to shut my mouth. I don't care. I'm not shutting my mouth. Jesus, son of David. And this, no. So what I can do, I can do. I'm acting on what I'm believing God for. All I can do is shout. I will position myself here and shout. And Jesus would hear my cry and he would do what I'm believing him for. Amen. I'm blind, Bartimaeus. <laughs> Jesus called him. They said, bring him here. The people who were telling him, shut your mouth, shut your mouth, shut your mouth, suddenly became his best friends. They were the ones taking him there. <laughs> See? People telling you to shut your mouth when you get your breakthrough will celebrate with you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So, and then Jesus said to him, what, what would you have me do? He also had to, he had to speak. I need my sight. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. So we act. Amen. And the last one is S, another S. Amen. Amen. S. It's to speak. We have to learn to speak the word of God. The word of God. The word of God is the most powerful weapon we have. We have to stand on the word of God and speak the word of God all the time. And then also, you know, when the enemy is trying to stop us, we need to make sure we speak back. We must refuse to be intimidated by the devil. Because he will come and say, you know, the Bible has said, you're standing on the word of God. By his stripes, I'm healed. And then the symptoms are showing. What are you going to do? Hey, yeah, I'm still sick. <laughs> no, by his stripes, I am healed. In the name of Jesus, I speak. Because what it is, is those circumstances will speak to you. You have to speak back to the circumstances. We have to learn to superimpose the word of God on our circumstances. I am not moved by what I see, by what I feel, by what the doctors say, by what my bank account is saying, or by what my kids are doing right now. I speak the word of God. Parents, if you have kids who are playing up, 
Don't be aligned your mouth with what is happening. Speak and declare what you're believing God to happen in their lives. Amen. Speak, declare it. Amen. Oh, you, you are totally useless. No, you're not useless. In the name of Jesus, this is what will happen to you. This is what you're going to become. In the name of Jesus, this is going to be a major test. You, we speak, we line our words with the word of God. Amen. And then when the enemy is trying to intimidate us, we fight back. We fight back with our words. Well, what are you going to use to fight? The word of God in your mouth. Amen. Amen. David. David and Goliath, we know the story. Goliath said, look, this little boy, look at you. You, I'm going to chop off your head. By the time Goliath said one thing, David had said ten things. And David ran to him. And that's what we need to do. We speak the word of God and we speak back against our circumstances. We speak our word of God, the word of God over our circumstances. Because the word of God is the final say so in the name of Jesus. Amen. We speak the word of God. Amen. So this is a new word now. Sent. Sent has. <laughs> Hallelujah. Send us. In 2020. We're going to fix our focus in this. Amen. And in doing this, please sit down. Thank you very much. Hallelujah. You know, in the speaking, in the speaking, we're speaking the word, we're declaring his praises. His praises will continually be on our lips in the name of Jesus. And you know what? Whilst we're in the middle of the storm, in the middle of the storm, we've gone from here to here. We trust that God who brought us this far and he has told us to get to the other side, he's going to get us to the other side. And you're going to tell the devil, you know this shaking the storms, I will make a nice move, a nice dance in the storm. I will make a nice dance and I will praise the Lord in the middle of the storm. I will praise the Lord because this storm too will add to my testimony. It will make the testimony even smoother because there is nothing that you can do. This storm, this storm, this storm, I'm still going to get to the other side in the name of Jesus. Can we all rise to our feet? And what I want us to do right now is... Let me tell you something. If you are in a storm right now, speak the word of God. Dance. Sing songs of joy in the midst of the storm, knowing that the Lord will take you there. If you are not, know that when you get there, you are going to still dance and praise the Lord. Because you know that you are going to get to the other side. When he said, go cross over. He, you know, he, 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 you are crossing over. In the name of Jesus. You know, he said it, that, you know, when you go through the fire, he will be with you. When you go through the waters, the storms, the waters will not overflow you. You will not be drowned. The enemy will make it look like you are drowning. It will look like you are not drowned. You cannot drown because greater is he that is in you and he that is in the world. And listen, the Lord knows that you're coming to this storm. And he knows that you have everything in you. He has equipped you. In the name of Jesus. And the very best of you will come out in the storm. Lift both hands up right now. And say, Lord Jesus, the very best of me will come out in this storm. In the name of Jesus. Whatever storms come my way, Lord, the best will come out. In Jesus' name. And I know that by, with you by my side, I will cross over to the other side. My testimony will be full. My testimony will be complete in the name of Jesus. That your name will be glorified. Your name will be lifted high. In Jesus' mighty name we are prayed. Amen. Let's give Jesus a clap of praise. Thank you, Jesus. Hope you enjoyed today's message. We would really love to pray with you. So please do get in touch with us via any of the following. 